Hello everybody and welcome to Everton Live. We're back here for the last time this season and what an enormous game it is. I'm Sarah Halpin and I am joined by my right hand man in Ian Snowden for this one today. Al Snods. A nervous right hand man, may yeah. I tell you. A nervous right hand man. I think I've had three hours sleep, you know. Yeah, I since... really, I really have. I've never been this nervous, Sarah, uh, when I played. Yeah. Absolutely. For the last for the last few weeks, I know I've been doing commentary and usually I let myself go on commentary <laughs> and Daz can't shut me up and now he's even having to tell me to say something, but I'm that intrigued with the game, I'm that focused on the game that no words come out of my mouth, so hopefully uh, the boys are going to get us over the line tonight. Let's hope so. We could all really do with a good night's sleep. I would tell you what we have to come on the show, but at the moment we're having a problem with the monitor, but we have got pr plenty of stuff to come for you today on Everton Live. Earlier I spoke to Paul Wilkinson, of course, who played for Everton in the 80s. I spoke to an Australian fan, Mark, who has travelled all the way from Australia specifically Incredible. for this game. Did you, you were speaking to we him spoke, before, me I believe. and Graeme Stewart spoke to him. Incredible journey. Wow. What, what fans go through to get to Goodison Park and support the team, but that is beyond anything I can ever recall. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? You know, obviously, he's come over from Australia, flied from, flew, I should say, flied, flew from Australia to America, to Dubai, to Manchester. Yeah. That's what it means, isn't it? And, he's, and there weren't an hotel room when he got to Manchester as well. They'd, uh, they'd not booked him. In, the company had not booked him in uh, in an hotel in Manchester, apparently. <laughs> so he's had to wander around and find an hotel, and then catch the train to Lime Street. It's just an incredible journey that the the chaps had. And so me and Graham said, "Oh, when are you going back? Are you having a couple of days rest?" He went tomorrow. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's going back tomorrow it, as well. So it's cr it's you know fair the, the... play to the gent. Absolutely fair play to him because it's not something to be taken lightly. He wanted to be here to have his voice heard here today as part of the tens of thousands of Evertonians uh, here today to try and draw the Blues over the line. We all want to win. We all want to be able to go to bed tonight not worrying about anything. We've seen the scenes outside as well, haven't we? Obviously, I've been inside since about 5 o'clock, mm. but even walking down Goodison Road at 5 o'clock, there were so many people gathering already then. The pyro, the smell yeah. of it, everything. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Do you know what, Sarah? The fans couldn't have done anything more from the Chelsea game, the Brentford game, and here tonight. I'm sure it's going to be incredible noise. We've seen it outside. It just gets better and better every uh, every home game that we have, but tonight will be uh, it'll be deafening come kick off but the fans as I say have played their part the boys have got to play theirs tonight yeah, they have and you know I feel like last week against Brentford we were very very unfortunate weren't we because actually we started the game so well and Richarlison probably could have scored before we went yeah. ahead then we do go ahead and we should have a penalty kick we don't receive the penalty kick a long ball goes at the end and sadly Jared Branthwaite gets the red card. Do you know what, said? Does it surprise you that we, we didn't get a penalty? Because it doesn't surprise me when you see the Man City game, the Liverpool game, etc., where we haven't got penalties. That's a clear penalty. Yeah. Richardson's getting the shirt pulled off his back and, it, and it's a penalty. But you're right, we started extremely well. The crowd were right behind him. They make a clearance after Richardson's getting his shirt pulled. Yeah. He, he's, I don't think Jared should have been in that position, but immaterial, he gets the wrong side, he, he gets brought down, uh, Ivan Tony, and it's a penalty. Then the whole atmosphere changed inside the ground, so it's gone from being bedlam, noisy as hell, the, the crowd are right behind the team, to almost, you can't believe it, we're down to 10 men. And then it's a tough ass to ask to play probably 65, 70 minutes against 11 men, and uh, we just couldn't see it over the line, but uh, hopefully tonight, it ain't going to be easy. These, this Palace team are a strong outfit. Got a lot of fit lads, a lot of hungry lads as well. So it's going to be a tough, tough game. But yeah, we're Everton Football Club. We we know what this game means. We win today. We are safe. And uh, I, I've no need to say to the crowd, come on, play your part. I know they're going to play your part. I want to say to the lads, come on, play your part. Definitely, as you said, we know full well that the fans are going to make this place just an absolute fortress. We want to make it horrible for Crystal Palace to play and just roar our boys on. Because as you said, what bigger 
you know, of a prize could there be, given what we've gone through all emotionally, mentally, everything for the last few months, to be able to go to sleep tonight knowing that our Premier League status is secure for next season. That is the prize at the end of this, of getting three points today. And you know what, how sad it is that a club like Everton are, are having to come down to this, and then if we don't get anything, it's coming down to the last game. I've been in that situation in 94 against Wimbledon down to the last game. It isn't pleasant, it isn't nice. And we've got hell of a game at Arsenal if it does go to that. So I don't want to see it go down oh, to the last game. My nerves could not take that. And I'm sure thousands and thousands of Evertonians' nerves couldn't take that. So let's get it over the line tonight. Let's get it over the line. We need to, don't we? Yeah. We could all do with just being able to relax a little bit in what has been... You know, as I said, it's 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 not to be taken lightly. It's affecting all of us. And I like what Frank Lampard's saying about being focused. And we don't want to let it get into our heads too much and affect the way that we approach this game. But we've got to be aggressive and we've got to have a go, haven't we? Yeah, of course. I, I think the, the way we started off against Brentford is exactly how we've got to start off against Crystal Palace. The crowd were right behind him. We, you're right, Richarlison had a couple of chances. We started on the front foot. We got the goal. And things were going fantastically well. And I... I believe that if Jared Anker got sent off, we would have won the game. Comfortable victory, Yeah, we would, we would have won the game because Brentford looked so uncomfortable. But when you did down 10, ten men, you get the, the likes of Christensen, who's a very experienced, quality player. He starts getting on the ball and dictating play. And they, their confidence started to grow. And even when we went in at 2-1, I went into the press room and thought, we need at least another two goals here to win this game. And it weren't, and it proved that, uh, yeah, one goal, well, two one at uh, half time wasn't enough to get us over the line. Yeah, it's always going to be a tough ask, and I felt the same as you. We'd got the we'd got the penalty. We'd gone two one up. Another dreadful decision. The player should have been sent off. Yeah, we'd have been ten men each then, and I think we probably in that case would go on to win the game as well. But it was always going to be tough having to play seventy minutes or so. Uh, with Sarah, can, Sarah, can you tell me why he didn't get sent off? I, I absolutely cannot tell you. I can't, you. because I, in commentary I was saying, well, Daz, he's been booked, he's got to go. But mm -hmm. nothing, nothing. And, yeah, that would have evened it up 10v10. And then all of a sudden you become favourites again. So It's hard to take, isn't oh. it, I think? You know, everyone has decisions that don't go their way every now and then, but this season it has been time and time and time again. And, you know, you can't help but think we should be home and dry by now. But... Evertonians, when we're disgruntled, when we feel we've had an injustice done against us, that's when we are at our best. And you best believe that that is how we're feeling today. We feel hard done by for what happened on Sunday. Mm. So let's go out and get it done. Oh, sorry, we are having problems with our monitor here, so it's quite difficult as it we. It is uh, difficult. Yeah, you're, we're, we're you're trying to look at. I think we just got a quick glimpse of uh, the players arriving arriving there, yeah. um, but then it's gone off again the monitor. So yeah, it is difficult, but everybody knows. What we need, all right, we're, we're struggling to see any monitor, but I think everybody's feeling what we're feeling, Sarah, nervous, mm. the tension's building. Um, incredible, incredible scenes out there yet again. I believe I've been talking to people and they said it was better than the Brentford game. And I went out here, the Brentford game, and I thought he doesn't get any better than this, but apparently they've been lying in the streets for miles yeah. today. So uh, all credit to our fans. Oh, incredible support, absolutely incredible support. And, you know, every single one of us in this stadium and those that aren't in the stadium, those that are watching us on Everton Live, wherever you are in the world, we all deserve this. We all want it so desperately. We couldn't see before because the monitor is down, but we were showing the player arrivals. We've spoken about it before, but they must feel 10 feet tall coming into that rapturous applause, the blue smoke. You can't even see the coach. It, the, the coach emerges like a shark <laughs> amongst the blue, the blue smoke. They must, you know... Well, I, w I would like to think so, Sarah. I know if that were me sat on that bus, wow, I would feel 10 foot tall. Now, you don't know how, how different players are going to take to it. Does it make some players even more nervous? when they actually go onto the feet or when they arrive at the ground to see the reception that they get when they come out and warm up, the reception they get coming out to Z cars. It might add an extra pressure to some, but I used to thrive on it. I really did, and I know a lot of players I played with in that Everton team thrived on it as well. So it, it can go two ways, but I would like to say that that would give me the biggest boost ever before a game of football, and I hope it does the same to our boys. Let's hope so. And I can imagine, Snods, that I know the answer to this. Obviously, you spoke about in the 90s, Wimbledon, mm. you were playing. 
Did you prefer playing, feeling like you had more control yeah. than being a yeah. supporter? Yeah, we had a doubt. I, mm -hmm. I knew we had a massive job to do, especially when we went 2-0 down, but Goodness at me, least yeah. you could do something about it. Here, we're just, I'm just a fan commentating that can't do anything about it. And honestly, my nerves the last few weeks have been unbelievable. I, I left after the Brentford game and uh, I had no, no desire to even go out I think I, I, let, I took my dog out for a five minute walk and got in bed. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. I was that I was that depressed and didn't feel right and I thought, well, take my little dog, you're only having a five minute walk and I'm <laughs> off to bed. So, uh, so and that's that's how it affects me. Yeah, massively and I'm with you there, Snods. After the game I had various people telling me chin up, head up and I was not in the mood, we'll no. just say that. I, I very much needed to be left alone and just feel what we're feeling. It takes its toll, but we will soon know the team that is going to face Crystal Palace today. The team that will hopefully get the victory and ensure our Premier League status for next year. It's just about, well, it's less than five minutes away now. I'm not too sure about how we're going to do this team news because no. we can't see what's going on. We're literally doing the show blind right Somebody now. Somebody must give us a team sheet. Someone's there, surely got to help us out here. We're yeah. just kind of winging it here, aren't we? <laughs> we are. and doing the best that we possibly can. But I want to talk to you about Dominic Calvert-Lewin. For me personally, I'd start him again. Yeah. Would you start him? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. I'd, I'd leave it as the same front three. I'd give it um, Richarlison. Leon Osman there, I know. pulling faces. <laughs> nice to see him yeah. smiling for once. It, yeah, he'd probably be biting his nails shortly, I think. Hey. And as yeah. I, I was looking at Leon, the screen come back on as well, but it oh, keeps, gone off keeps again. going off again. But uh, it's Leon. We need to be there to, to make it work. So yeah, I, I would. Um, I would leave the same three, yeah. uh, Richarlison, Anthony Gordon and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And I think it will be, I don't think it'll be any different. I think if Michael Keane has got over his illness, then I think he'll, be, he'll slot in, which he's got to, because really we haven't got another send off, but Michael will, uh, will slot in there. It'd just be interesting to see, see the midfield. Will Do you he... think the Van der Beek? <sighs> Is it too much for him? He, he could play him. Uh, will he? Will he play Alan? Is Alan going to be 100 percent fit? I think that's I think that's the area. I think the back four speaks for itself, unless he puts Ben Godfrey in there. It's going to say, of course, which, he should be in the squad today. Yeah, he is. I think it might be too much for Ben. I think I think we'll see uh, Ben and Van der Beek on the on the bench if I'm if I'm right. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully they won't need to come on because we're hopefully going to be winning two or three now. Oh, let's hope so. <laughs> I tell you what, Snods, I would love nothing more than for us to be do you honest, or... Do you honestly think, <laughs> being Everton, that we can have a, a <laughs> stress-free night and win two or three nil? Not a chance. It's it's in our DNA, isn't Not it? A we chance. know if you're in this stadium and you're protecting a lead, you know, ten minutes feels like ten years, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And I really hope that it, it doesn't go to that. You'd love nothing more than to see us, you know, comfortably dominating the game. But we know Crystal Palace are a good side. Yeah. We will have the team news in just a couple of minutes, but we know they've got the likes of Conor Gallagher, of Zahar, of Eze, of even former Liverpool striker Benteke. You know, you don't like those kind of players to come up against, but it's all about Everton today. It's all about how we set up and what we do. And fingers crossed, we will have enough to get the win and get this over the line. So Godfrey Van der Beek in contention, but you don't you don't. Think I honestly start. don't think no. I honestly don't think so. Um, I think um, I think they'll be on the sub bench. Yeah. And just over your shoulder now is uh, the uh, Crystal Palace manager Patrick Vieira. I'm gonna ask him to do us a favour. <laughs> Go on, you can get away with it there. I just want to say, give us three points tonight, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Snods could get away with that. I don't think I could. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Well, we've got just under a minute now until team news, so we will be able to dissect that and be able to know. We we'll feel better, don't we, when we've got the team in front of us? Because yeah. we can speculate, we can talk about does Alan come back in and all the rest of it, but we will know very, very shortly what team it is that's going to face Palace and, of course, the visitors, Crystal Palace as well, as I say. And do you know what, Sarah? Knowing Patrick Vieira and how he plays and how he's played all his career, he ain't going to let up. Oh, he, no. He'll say to his team, you go out there and you give me everything and you go out and win the game. That's what he'll be thinking, and, and rightly so. He's not here to uh, for them to, as they put it, put the slippers on and they're on the beach. He, he's not that kind of person. He's not that kind of player. So he won't... Um, he, he won't allow that. 
Well, tongue in cheek, I tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You won't do it. Well, here we go. Here is the team to face Patrick Vieira's uh, Crystal Palace. Sorry, we haven't got the monitor, so we are currently using the team sheet for you. So in goal for Everton is number one, Jordan Pickford. Number four, Mason Holgate. Five, and returning from illness, Michael Keane. Brilliant to see him back in the squad. Seven, Richarlison. Dominic Calvert-Lewin does start again, leading the line for Everton. Abdullahi Decore, number 16. Alexander Awobi, who has been absolutely superb in recent weeks. Vitaly Mikalenko, number 19. Andre Gomez starts the game again for Everton. Captain Seamus Coleman and Anthony Gordon as well there for the Blues. And the substitutes bench for today, we have Begovic, John Joe Kenny, Alan, Damari Gray, Ben Godfrey, Tom Davis there as well, Donny van der Beek, Delhi, and Rhys Welsh, the young, young man as well on the bench. Let's have a look at the away 11. Number one, Jack Butland. Number three, Mitchell. Six, um, do you want to try and give that no, one pronunciation not for at me? All. Captain Mark Guhai. <laughs> say apologies to Mark there. Uh, nine, Jordan Ayu. Ten, Eze. Number 11, Zahar. 12, Hughes. 14, Mateta. 15, Schluck. 16, Anderson. And 17, Klein. And the bench for Crystal Palace. Guaita, Ward, Milovic. Vujovic, apologies, I can never get that one out. Kuyate, Benteke, Edward, Conor Gallagher, Martin Kelly, and Rak Saki as well. Okay, so that's the team for Everton. What do we make of that one then? Um, the only surprise, but I'm not saying it is a surprise, is Andre Gomez. I thought Alan, if he's fully fit, I'm, I don't know the situation with Alan. I thought Alan might have come in there and sat in there, but Andre Gomez is in there. He's the team I thought. I didn't think uh, Godfrey or Van der Beek would start the game. They're definitely on the bench. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also pleased in a way that Conor Gallagher's on their subs bench as well. You took the words out of my mouth yeah, there. That, yeah. Looking at their team, I, he's I know. He's a tricky player. Oh, he's enthusiastic. He's a quality player. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm delighted that he's, uh, he's actually not on uh, the starting lineup. But they've still got some... Uh, Still got some good players, obviously Zahar, as a Ayu. So we know uh, they've got uh, they've got goals in them and uh, they've got flair about them. But I don't care what's on the other side of the team sheet. It's about us, isn't it? It's sports? about us, yeah. absolutely. All I care about is that is them eleven that are starting and them substitutes. If any are required to come on, that they go out and do the business. And you know what? That bench does look a little bit healthier yeah. than it did last week. Obviously, having players like Damari Gray to come on and make an impact if we need him. Alan, I like seeing Alan in the team. Um, not sure if that's an injury or what's what quite what's gone on there. But, yeah, it is Andre Gomez who's kept his place. Perhaps didn't have the best of games. No. Um, but, obviously, again, it's hard to, to judge and, 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 and make judgments on people given the fact that we were without yeah well, you, you're down to so you're down to 10 men and, and you do struggle you need to restructure your, your team your formation at the time and uh, yeah it, it was a difficult game for all our boys but uh, yeah it's kept his place and uh, hopefully let's see he might be the answer tonight maybe andre gomez hat trick no, uh, in coming today <laughs> I, I wouldn't go as far as that sir but it do me if he got even one yeah, absolutely. Well, that's what we're hoping for. But like you, we know we know that Crystal Palace have got good players. But looking at that Everton side, you know the likes of Alex Awobi. I'm pleased to see Dominic Calvert Lewin start yeah. again. I must yeah. admit. Yeah, I, I thought I thought he would. Yeah. He, he won enough headers. He looked sharper than I've seen him in recent weeks. To be fair, and he, he won quite a few headers uh, against the Brentford back three that were had some big lads in there. So. Uh, just love to see him on the goals yeah. sheet tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm saying I'd love to see everybody on the goals sheet. <laughs> if, if I had my way, we'd win 10 nil. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm after a big performance from Dom tonight. Definitely after a big performance from Dom and somebody else who will be after a big performance from Dom and for the rest of the lads is Frank Lampard. Here's his press conference. How would you describe the mood of the camera? Determined, focused. Um, I thought you saw that at Brentford. The, the, the first 17 minutes it was quite seemed pretty um, not sure to me. It's a game of football, but 17 minutes it felt the other game was only going in one direction because we were so on our game. And after that event, even the work ethic and the spirit of the team to try and you know go ahead again and try and get a result at that point. 
uh, was something that we could, you can be proud of in, in itself. Um, so of course we want to um, keep 11 players on the pitch. Things that you can control, you try to. But in terms of the approach in the game, we have to replicate that again to what we did at Brentford. Someone take the view that it's all or nothing on Thursday night. Clearly it's not, because obviously you've got that game against Arsenal to come mm. at the weekend as well. But do you almost have to approach it like it's all or nothing? Um, well, no, it's, it's not. So um, if you approach it all or nothing and we don't get the right result, do you then try and rekindle the fact that you've got a game to come? It's the reality. So we have to approach it as a game at Goodison, um, a game against a really good opponent and a game that we all just understand what it is. The fact is, though, that it's in your hands and you have that opportunity to seal safety against Crystal Palace. That, that's a nice thing. You know, that's a good thing. And, you know, if you'd have offered that to us a few weeks ago, for, for sure, we probably would have taken it. Um, but that's how it's, it's just words at the moment. It's nice that it's in our hands if we can put in a right performance, uh, get some things that go our way, tap into the to the atmosphere, which is going to be special. And night, our fans are going to turn up in huge numbers to support the players. Um, if we can tap into that, then we know we have a, an opportunity to, to get where we want to be. Clearly, the fans as well, though, want it done on, on Thursday night. But do you almost need, as well as the, the fervent atmosphere, do you also need a little bit of patience on the night if you don't, say, get an early goal? Yeah, and I think we'll get that. It's too big an occasion. I think the fans understand a difficult opponent and the, the threats that they have. And at Brentford, even when it became very difficult with 10 men, they stuck with us. So I believe they'll do that no matter what the circumstances of the game. At this stage, Frank, can you think about what it means to yourself personally if you are able to secure Premier League status on Thursday night? Yeah, but I'd probably rather talk about it when it happens, to be honest. It's just we're not, we're not there yet and uh, it's not important at the moment what it means to me. It's important about the football club getting to where you want to be and, as you've said, it's in our hands to do it over the course of the next two games. And on the night, you'll clearly <laughs> want urgency from your players, but how do you also ensure that, that it's not a little bit too urgent? They're not trying to throw things forward too quickly, balls into the box too quickly, things like that. They, yeah, they're, they're well, well, no, yeah that, that's fine. That, it's... Uh, Urgency is one thing, uh, decision making in game is another. That's why I felt the first 17 minutes against Brentford was so good because we had a, a real element of times to be slightly more direct and have an idea of what we want to do. If we're more straightforward, times to play, um, always times to be aggressive about how we defend, whether we're high up the pitch or, or, or lower, which we've done very well, very well in, in the last. Uh, I don't know, six, seven, eight games. Um, so we just have to, to keep going with that same idea and not come away from that. Welcome back to Everton Live and I am delighted to be joined by former Everton player Paul Wilkinson. Now Paul, thank you so much for joining us here on Everton Live today. How does it feel to be back? You were just saying you haven't been here since the pandemic. No, 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 I'm really looking forward to it. I was, uh, I was just saying to the guys over there, uh, my, one of my first home games when I actually joined the club was a Bayern Munich game in the semi-final and it feels to me it's got that sort of atmosphere and that I, I just drove down Goodison Road by mistake really coming into the <laughs> ground so I've, I've had the full feel of the fans and you know the way that everybody's looking forward to the game yeah absolutely well of course you know the Bayern Munich game is a bit contrasting in terms of what we were going for compared to what we are today but as you said the one thing that will be consistent is this Goodison Park crowd you've had the joy of playing here scoring yeah. a derby here you know <laughs> you think it's going to be absolutely rocking today isn't it yeah I mean it's fantastic I mean it, as you said there's, there's so many new grounds nowadays but this ground just holds so much tradition and so and the fans are so close to the pitch that any atmosphere they get going is just going to get going to get the team moving tonight, and you know, as, as uh, hopefully we we get a positive outcome. But uh, you know, the main thing is Everton have got it in their own hands. Yeah, that's it exactly. You know, a few weeks ago we'd have probably been really grateful to be in a position where a win in a home game at Goodison would secure Premier League status for next year, wouldn't we? So let's get it done today, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, after the, the Liverpool game, everybody was really down and feeling. You know, everybody was worrying for obviously staying in the Premier League. But then, to be fair, we got two good results, back-to-back -back results against Chelsea and Leicester, and then obviously the result, the draw at Watford was was a good. Just seven points out of nine. You're looking at thinking that's fantastic. But then obviously the game the other day against Brentford circumstances went against us so hopefully we might get some circumstances go for us tonight. We certainly do that to happen <laughs> yes. aren't we Paul? There's been enough instances this season and we there don't want to you know, go on about it too much but you know last week I think it's safe to say we probably win the game if it wasn't for the decisions don't we? Yeah yeah I mean I felt so for the young boys it was a little bit unlucky and it's a long clearance and he, he didn't really trip him over he sort of fell over his legs and sometimes you get away with them sometimes you don't unfortunately on the day he did and, and obviously uh, it conspired to the game going against us. But as I said, the main thing is it's in our hands. 
you know, we've got two games and the important thing is, is to get over the line. We've got to get it over the line and let's hope we do that today. Uh, just to speak to you, of course, about the manager you played under in Howard Kendall, you know, yeah. an absolute icon, a legend and yeah. so well loved by all the fans. And the current manager, Frank Lampard, he's building that rapport, isn't he, with the fans and the support as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, it was always going to be a tough, tough ask for Frank when he came in. There was... You know, he's come in and he's, he's got the club going again. And, and the big thing is that the fans uh, have joined in with everything over the last few games. And, and that's the most important thing. If you go to any any club at any spot, and you can hear them singing outside the ground now, and it's only half past five. So Crazy. you get the feeling of, of what, what it means to them tonight. And, you know, and I'm sure Howard will be looking down on us that, as... Terry Darrow, Colton, one or two of the others as well, they'll all be lo looking and hoping for a positive result, as we all are. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. I think that's a perfect way to finish. Absolutely lovely words, and I'm sure they're all with us today. Paul, thank you so much, and hope you enjoy the game, and hopefully we're smiling after. Yep, definitely. <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank so you. much.
some great contenders there for Everton's goal of the month. We couldn't see him because the monitor's down, no, as I keep saying, I but we know some of the ones that are on there. Mikalenko's got to be right up there as great well, hasn't he? Great and what volley. an important goal to Yeah, well, Massey, I'm just delighted for the boy because it's been hard for him since he arrived, obviously, from the Ukraine with what's going off, but I was absolutely delighted, not only, not only for him, but... Uh, the way the players reacted to him, run over to the corner flag, celebrate. But what a finish it was, Sarah. Not easy, that is No, it? a left foot volley from the edge of the box, struck it. And we're talking about a, a great goalkeeper in Casper Spichel as well. Absolutely. He just couldn't get nowhere near it. And then, uh, I know it seems that long ago, but uh, Andros Townsend's against Burnley was an Beautiful. incredible goal. Um, commentating on that one it was a fantastic finish <laughs> we've seen great goals early season from Damari Gray as well so yeah there's a lot of good goals um, I don't care whether they're tap-ins or great goals doesn't matter as does long it? as it goes in off a, off a blue shirt I don't, <laughs> it don't bother me but uh, yeah there's some good goals amongst them there's some brilliant ones hopefully there'll be a few to add to that list from today's game we'll have to wait and see um, but we've got some more footage for you of the player arrivals and the, just the crowd on Goodison Road and I've got to say you know we're talking from five o'clock onwards that's like three hours almost before the game to see fans gathering in those numbers with that positivity and stuff like that it it's just I cannot speak more highly of our supporters and, and our club in terms of the people and for me that's what it's about and this is why I want this to end tonight it's for all these people who bleed for this club eat, sleep, breathe it Do you know what sir, I, I was delighted that they changed the route yeah. because our way in usually is uh, along County Road, up, up the road and then turn left to go to the Gladys School car park by the Ola Trinity statue Yes. and we arrived against Brentford at 10 to 2 and as I turned I, I couldn't get nowhere near the statue I'm thinking where am I going it was just a massive supporters you can't see can you, and, you? and luckily I had, to, I had to carry on and I'm like edging my way inch by inch and luckily the police and the stewards and even some fans recognised it with me driving and kind of all parted oh, the way and all asking to move <laughs> and it took us 10 minutes to get through but we eventually made it so I'm glad the the rerouted <laughs> the, the bus today and but I didn't really see I've not seen the scenes I saw the scenes against Brentford which are quite incredible but well. I've been told the scenes today were even greater than the ones against Brentford I find that hard to believe but everybody's telling me it went on for miles the support down there so I can't wait to see the footage oh I, you know it makes me proud to be an Evertonian absolutely mm. snods and you know I think that in the media the sort of narrative it certainly feels to me that everyone's kind of been relishing in our kind of misery a little bit and almost happy to see us where we are and then you see those fans and you think we do not deserve to be where we are we are the best fans in the world and I think some people having seen the fans have maybe changed their mind a little bit and thought you know for, for them fans people keep, need to be in the people seat. keep asking me nearly Liverpool fans why, or even Everton fans, why did you sign for Everton or why did you sign for us? That says it all. Them, them fans out there say everything. I, I don't need to answer. They answered for me. And I tell you what makes me laugh as well. The thought of you getting them to part, oh, the, it was incredible. part the traffic like the Red Sea, I should say like the Blue Sea. <laughs> I'm glad I had a good affinity with the Evertonian because if I hadn't, there was, no, there, there was no way I were going to get through there. They'd probably <laughs> kick me car in. But I had a great affinity with the <laughs> fans, so uh, so they just they, they made way and I eventually got down the road. But it was unreal, oh. unreal. But well, that's what you get because you are, of course, an Everton, you know, a treasure to us. You know, you. you I'm not a treasure, Sarah. I'm not a legend. I was somebody that signed for this football club that I wanted to play for for this football club, and I tried me damned hardest, and that's all that these fans want. And and. That's all. I were, I were no superstar. I were no Kevin Sheedy. I were no Graham Char. I were no Dixie D. I were Ian Snowden that tried, and that is as good to the, them fans as anything else. If you give hundred percent, and I say it every time on, I'm on air, if you give this crowd hundred percent, they will back you till till you've got your last breath. Absolutely, and that Ian Snowden is why people part the traffic for you because <laughs> you embody what an Everton player should be. I love this be. club. I yeah. love this club, and uh, 
I, I can't say any more words. I, I, I get emotional when we lose. I, I'll be emotional if we win today. I, I, I know I know I will, and, and that's how I feel about this football club. It's a massive part of my life. It is. When you're saying that then, Snods, I must admit, I get a sort of lump in my throat there. and Because, it, you know, it, it is everything. And this has been, as I keep reiterating, we all know how tough this has been. It's, it's impacted all of our lives because Everton is such a huge part of our lives, of our friends' lives, of our family's lives, of everyone. And, you know, we've, we've all been in this together, haven't we? So to see the seas of blue outside, can you imagine the scenes? Win yeah. today, just yeah. that relief and ecstasy that we're still going to be in the top division, which is where Everton football football belongs. Oh, one million percent. But it don't give us right to be in the top league. We've got we've got to go out and earn it, Sarah, and they've got to go out and earn it tonight. And let's not get it down to that last game. Oh, please, having no. to rely on other results, having to rely on us to beat Arsenal, etc. I just don't want that. Tonight's the night that I want this place absolutely rocking at the end of the game, knowing, sadly, sadly rocking because we've stayed up, which this club shouldn't be in that position, but unfortunately we are. And if we win the game and this place is rocking, there'll be nobody singing as loud as me and you. Oh, I you know, know, I know it's not... I know that. Yeah. I know that. I really do. So, uh, come on, our boys. I know they're just behind us. They've come out for the warm-up. Yeah. And uh, come, come 20 to 8... When they walk out to Zed Cars, wow, airs on the back of my neck and everybody's in this ground with the stuff. I tell you, honestly, it's it's an incredible scene. The noise for the players just running out onto the pitch mm. to warm up, you know, and it's gonna be like that, I believe, from the first whistle to the last, and you're quite right, Snods. Nobody loves Ever more than you know, Evertonians and it just means the world to us. As I said, yeah, I, I've not been wanting to speak to anyone this week. I've not I've had to force myself to go and be social and see friends because people are worried about me because <laughs> <laughs> they know what it means, you know. It's but, a life, Sarah, yeah. it's Evertonians life. Football is a massive, massive industry, it's a massive sport, but it's people's lives. That's they think about this football club, they think about football more than anything in life really, and it, it's a tough thing to say, but it really does. I, I know so much effort. We're only going on on the gentleman that's travelled over oh, from oh, Australia. Fantastic. It's absolutely incredible. But there's Evertonians that have been travelling for many, many years, home and away into Europe, etc. I just applaud them all. I take my I take my hat off to them, every one of them. It's beautiful. It's it's getting me emotional, to be honest. Even now, you know, we've still got a, a, a pretty long way to go until kickoff, but the fans are here and they're already making their voices heard. Now for something a little bit different. We said goodbye to a true Everton women legend, Simone McGill. Desperately going to miss her. Here is her farewell interview. Yeah, do you know what? It's never an easy decision. Um, obviously, I've been here nine years. Um, you know, I'm one of like a homegrown player now um so yeah it's it's never an easy decision um but you know one that i felt i had to to make and um yeah I, to say i'm emotional um it will be sad to to leave this club you know i've grown to to love the club and the fans and the people and what it stands for so to leave this club will be very sad Let's cast your mind back to 2013, a young 18-year-old making a move over to Liverpool, still being at school, but then training with us. You know, that must have been tough. What do you recall from, you know, that time in your career? Yeah, you know, it was quite surreal. Um, obviously, I was still in high school in Northern Ireland, and I remember coming over um, to do my trials here with back when Andy Spence was the manager, and um, they agreed to sign me, which was just amazing. Um, and, yeah, for three, four months, I was commuting from Northern Ireland to Liverpool to play for Everton on a weekend so um, yeah it was it was well worth it I actually really enjoyed it you know I came over here as such a young kid with no idea where I was looking to go in life and I suppose when I sit here now you know I've gone through uni I'm, I'm married now you know I'm, I met Mark over here um, and I've really built a life for myself over here so I think you know Everton's played a huge part in that with me being located here and just the support throughout the years as well. Um, so I suppose on reflection, you know, how I've managed to 
build my life and when I sit here now nine years later you know I had no idea where I was going and what direction I was going and where life was going to take me and you know I'm so thankful that I did choose Everton you know everything happens for a reason and you know I sit here now and you know I I'm a married woman and it's just it's just crazy how things do happen the way they do. As you walk out you know Finch Farm for the last time you know what what is the emotion what what do you reflect on the most? Yeah, do you know, I don't think that bit hit me yet. You know, that will be really sad. You know, I've been driving here for years. Um, so to leave and know that it's the last time, it will be it will be emotional. And I suppose just the people that I've met at this club, the fantastic people that work throughout the club, you know, not seeing them every day. I'm going to come in, like, from the stewards to the receptionist. You know, this people is filled with, or this club is filled with fantastic people. And to not be seeing them every day. I think that'll be hard as well. Um, but all I can do is, you know, wish the club the best and no doubt our paths will cross again sometime in the future. Well, it goes without saying, you know, Everton the club and, you know, entire Everton fan base wish you the very best. And, you know, I'm sure our paths will cross again. Simone, thank you very much. No problem. Once a blue, always a blue, eh? <laughs>
get over the line one more time and stay in the Premier League. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. what we want, isn't it? The win today is yeah. absolutely huge. It's a, such a monumental game in yeah. our recent history, yes. or history for the last sort of three decades. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you wanted to be here, isn't it? To, yeah. to experience we're, that. We're the least relegated team other than Arsenal in, in Australia, in, 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 fo in football history, in English football history. So, you know, we've got to keep that going yeah. and stay in the top flight. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And just quickly, you've been doing so so much media, haven't you, oh, since been, you got here? Well, it's been an absolute joy because, I mean, I, I still can't actually believe, I'm pinching myself that I'm here. <laughs> I literally am. And then uh, just to talk to other people who, you know, know what it means and why I'm here. Like, I don't feel like I'm alone, you know? You're, yeah. you're with your family yeah, now. Absolutely, you yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Your yeah, big yeah. Everton family. Yeah, totally, and yeah. Hopefully this will be a day that you yeah. and all of us can look back on as yeah. a massive yeah. and important game for all the right reasons. So yeah. can I get a prediction or are we not? Are we, uh, are we gonna... I'm tipping 3-1. 3-1? Oh, yeah. I'd take that. I'd yeah. love that. Going into yeah. the last few minutes with a two-goal yeah, yeah, buffer yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah, exactly right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not quite Everton, though, to be relaxed no, during games, is not. it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. And also, um, you know, we've heard about Fergie time when you know, United would get the extra time to their benefit. We've had, you know, those minutes tick on and tick on after 90 minutes and you just go, it's going to go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? that's, yeah. you get it. See, yeah, yeah. this man gets it. He knows the, the nail-biting oh, sort of feelings just, we have, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, you know, yeah. but hopefully yeah. it won't go to that far today. No. But So all that's left to say, Mark, is thank you so much my for pleasure. your incredible support and no, for being here today no. to hopefully roar us over my the line. Absolute, thank you to Everton for, you know, looking after one of your many, many fans. And come on, you Blues. Come on, you Blues. You heard it from Mark. Hopefully he's going to help roar us over the line today. But now let's hear from one of those boys in Royal Blue ahead of this game. Alex, that was quite the welcome today. What does that do for you as players going out on that pitch? Uh, just seeing us, seeing the fans come out to support us. They've been doing this for the past month or so. It gives us that extra motivation, desire to go on the pitch and not just perform for us, but perform for them as well. What have the past couple of days been like preparing for this game after the result at the weekend? Um, of course, it was a hard one to take, but with 11 men, we were doing very well. Just unfortunate the circumstances. We have to put down the past and take the positivities and bring it on to today's game. You know that a win will make you safe. You'll keep safety in the Premier League. Does that add the pressure now that you can see that finishing line? Um, no, not at all. I mean, we've all been in different situations and tough times in our careers, so we know how we dealt with those situations in the past. It's another game, and hopefully we can get the three points today. Brilliant stuff there, Alex Awobi. He's been fantastic, hasn't he, this season? Well, in the last few months, yeah. he's stepped up Since, since Frank come in, yeah. uh, he's given him a totally different role. He's brought him inside, or he's asked him to play as a as a wing back and uh, he's done fantastically well his his work rate has been been brilliant the crowd have took to him because they realize that he is putting a shift in uh, when it, we, we need it the most uh, he's playing with confidence and uh, i would imagine he's one of the first names on frank's uh, sheet when, it, when he puts them down these days yeah absolutely and given you know speaking about um how he has turned it around here at everton um, and that is massive credit to Frank Lampard, doesn't it? Talk about reviving a player's career. And you wouldn't have thought that a few months ago. He would be one of the first teams on the seat. And it's credit to him. He's been fantastic. Yeah, it's, we'll need a shift from him today. It has. Right? And it, it, it's a massive boost when uh, when he is performing and you hear the crowd and singing your name, etc. It gives you a massive boost. Because I'm sure Alex of Orbe thought, well, I've not pulled up any trees. It wouldn't surprise me if I were to leave this football club. But... If he performs like that uh, while he's a, an Everton player from now on, then there's no way he'll be leaving Everton Football Club. Absolutely, and that's what you love to see. It's, it's great to see that you can turn things around no matter what the situation. But it's fast approaching kickoff now. We've just been laughing off air. We've got fans coming up talking yeah. to us, saying keep everything crossed, oh, no. cross their legs, cross their fingers, cross their arms. But I tell you what, Snods, the, the closer we get to kickoff, Yes, I'm nervous, but I'm also inspired. I'm inspired by all these fans in here already, all the fans we can still hear out there, these players on the pitch. Oh, we're together, aren't we? And together, let's get this done today, Yeah, we're, we're, we're stood at the park end and we're looking up at the park end and you can see everybody is apprehensive, everybody's tense. But as soon as that team come out of the tunnel, wow, this place will be unbelievable. And I, I, I don't put my uh, headphones on when I'm commentating till the very last second before we kick off because 
I love the noise that's it's generated. Like yeah, the noise that's generated in this stadium. It, it, it touches you, it really does. And uh, I, I just can't stress the importance of this 90 minutes. It's huge. I just want to go home. I want to just blow a big sigh of relief. And I want to sit down and have a nice pint of lager oh, and relax. Absolutely. I do. The dog will get a longer walk oh, tomorrow. He <laughs> won't. I'll not go home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll not seem to. I'll not seem to uh, tomorrow. Be like that. Top but of now, his ball. Yeah. Where have you been, Dad? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's fantastic. It, I'm just. I am. I am nervous. I am nervous, but uh, I'm excited as well because I've got a feeling we're going to do it tonight. Oh, please. Please, let's do it tonight. But now let's hear from the man in charge. Frank Lampard, here's what he has to say ahead of this massive. Frank, you can see the finish line now. Does that make this a little bit more harder, though? Well, it's, it's, it's pressure. It's, um, but when you when you set out in this career, you want to work at a club of this level in the Premier League, then pressure comes, and at times you have to deal with that. So it's good pressure. You feel the support of the, of the fans have already felt that. But for ourselves, we have to worry about what we've done on the pitch, and we know what our target is. One force change with Jared, Michael Keane coming back in though, and Donny van der Beek also back in the squad. Yeah, I mean, Michael was, was not well before Brentford. Um, experienced player for us, obviously, so he's better now. And uh, yeah, Donny's back on the bench. Um, hasn't really trained a lot, so um, the right solution to put him on the bench and, uh, and see how we go. What do you want to see from your players out there on the pitch today against a pretty difficult Crystal Palace side? Well, a lot of passion, obviously, and energy, because that's a, that's a must when you feel our fan base and feel what they, they, they demand off, off of, uh, of us. But also against a good team, we have to be very focused and understand what we want to do in the game. They've got real talents in their team, uh, really well coached, well organised, had a good season. So we have to stay focused and not let the situation go to our heads. So everything, really, everything in a good way. You mentioned the fan base there. It was another fantastic welcome for you all as you arrived. How important is the fans for the last couple of games for you? Well, they've been, they've been important for us for a while and they, they continue to do that. Today they've ramped it up again. It was an, an amazing entry and um, it makes you feel that we want to give them something back because they turn up like that. That support is huge. It's not it's not the norm, actually. They are, they are very unique in what they do um, and we have to respond to that. Lampard already, what a bond he has. He gets yeah. us, doesn't he? And he's yeah, he does. Us. He does get us. Uh, he realises what a massive football club this is. He's only been here uh, a good few months now, and uh, yeah, the fans have took to him. He's took to this football club, and uh, he wants to do it for us. He really does. He does. I think, you know, given the fact that he broke his hand, I think, in the celebrations yeah. against Newcastle, I dread to imagine, or I'd be excited to see what he'd be like if we do get this one over the line. But we are going to wrap up very, very soon. So, Snods, what's your last well, thoughts it, it, on this? It's, one? it's our last home game. I'm sure the boys will be doing a lap of honour, but I want them to do it because we survived. Because this place will, nobody will leave the seats. No, absolutely nobody not. will leave the seats. So, I want to see a victory. And this place bouncing, and all I want to say is, up the toffees. Up the toffees to everybody who has joined us this season. We know it's been a tough season. We have had good times, but thank you for joining us and for Snods as well. It's been a pleasure to be a company by you well. on Everton Live, and hopefully we'll be absolutely buzzing we will. after this we one. We will. <laughs> so to all you guys, thank you. Let's get this done, and here's something to whet your appetite for this one. It's Spirit of the Blues.